Good evening and welcome to another thought-provoking episode of Be Inspired with Pepe Minambo. Tonight we continue with our series on just living an amazing life. A few weeks back we talked about the 10 places where money hides and then we moved to the five steps that enables people to move from a regular average life to becoming outstanding and to becoming amazing. But then after you become amazing and outstanding, you have acquired some levels of influence. And tonight, I want to introduce a new kind of reflection on becoming a person of influence. I learned many years ago that life, leadership, and growth is about influence. Nothing more and nothing less. Trust me, the person who got the job you didn't get was able to influence the panel better than you did. And the person who have gone through those that were locked for you was able to influence the doorkeepers for them to have access to opportunities beyond the door. I say life is about influence, nothing more and nothing less. But then how do you become a person of influence? The person who won the tender, the person who won the contract was able to influence the stakeholders. The person who got the visa or the person who got the opportunity to travel abroad and participate in that universal or global event was able to influence the people that called the shot, the people that made the decisions. So tonight we'll talk about how do you become a person of influence? Because influence enables you to get what you want. Influence enables you to get where you want to go. And influence enables you to be with the people you like to associate with. But then, are people born influential? Or people just cultivate influence along the way? I will refer to Shakespeare who once said, do not be afraid of greatness. Some people are born great. Some people are born influential, depending on where they come from, the families, the lineage, the associations. They are just influential. But others grow to become influential. So becoming a person of influence is a topic that I would like to kind of dive into tonight. And there are five levels in achieving influence how do you maximize your influence how do you attract more attention how do you attract more possibilities and opportunities how do you access even more possibilities and opportunities one thing that you need you may not need more intelligence you may not need more talent you may not need more education or more skills what you may need is simply influence influence that gives you access to the corridor of power Influence that gives you access to the right stakeholders. Influence that gives you access to possibilities and opportunities in life. If you are a tailor, how do you become influential to go beyond the tail? If you are a supervisor, how do you become influential to go beyond the supervisor's desk? If you are just an outsider, how do you become an influential to become an insider? If you are sitting at the back seat, how do you become influential to go to the front seat and become a frontliner. So let's talk about influence. In my studies of how to become influential in life, in business, in politics, in science, in academia, or even in your own family, I came across a lot of publications, but none of those publications were as inspirational and thought-provoking than the writings of John C. Maxwell. I think there's even a book by Maxwell on becoming a person of influence. But tonight, I want to talk about the five levels of influence, a reflection and a research put together by John C. Maxwell. Start first things first. Why influence? Why do you want to become influential? 
Because life is full of complexity. Life is full of ambiguity. Life is full of contradiction, paradoxes. You need influence sometimes to access the right people. You need influence to access the right tables. You need influence to access the right opportunities. You need influence to access the right capital, the right money, and the right partners. But then, how do you build that influence? Let me tell you, if there is a skill that you need to develop, is influence, becoming influential. That when you have an event, you call people come. That when you have a need, you call people come. That when you have an idea, you invite people come. That when you want to do something, everybody wants to be part of it. Everybody wants to support you, push you, push your brand, push you forward. Everybody wants to be part of you. But how do you grow to get to that level? It takes steps. It's a process. Are people born influential? Some are born influential. Some are born regular, average, but then in the process, they grow to become influential. And tonight, I'll talk about the five steps of influence, the five levels of influence. Level number one. You know, people follow you. People want to associate with you. People want to support you. People want to work for you or work with you because they have to. It's called the position level. So if in an institution you're a supervisor, do your subordinates have a choice? They don't have a choice. If you call a meeting on Monday at 8 o'clock, they will show up. And if you call them even over the weekend to come and complete an assignment, they will come. Is it because you are very influential? They like you? They want to support your goals and your dream? No. They don't have a choice. You are their supervisor. You are their boss. You have called for a meeting. You have asked for an assistance and they come. No, that's not sustainable. It's called the position level. You got the rights. You got the authority. You can hire, you can fire, you can threaten, you can brutalize, you can victimize. And people are afraid. And sometimes they follow you, they do the things you want them to do just because they have to. There is no sentimental attachment, there is no relationship, there is nothing beyond the task. Now, those are guys that could be influential in a workplace or in a community because they are holding certain positions. But the day you stop being the person you were appointed to be, the day you stop holding the position you've been holding, you meet these people on the streets, they will not even mind about you. They won't even say hello to you. They will just ignore you completely. If someone told me, you meet some people on the street and you tell your friends or your spouse, you say, you know that idiot that used to stress me so much at work? That's the fellow. You know why? Because the fellow had power over people just because they held a position. That's not sustainable. You can't be a head of a team or a team leader or a supervisor or a manager or a head of department and you feel that you're influential. Position guarantee influence, but no sustainable. There is a second level where people gain influence. That one is called the permission level. How do you influence people to give you permission? Permission to lead them. Permission to convince them. Permission to persuade them. A permission to make them follow you. Permission to make them support you. Permission to make them bite the bullet on your behalf. It's called the permission level. It's all about relationships. Let me tell you, the first thing that enables people to grow into influence is the quality of relationships they cultivate with others. If you come at a workplace and you are so isolated, you are so excluded, you don't connect with the rest of the people. Let me tell you, as they say in Uganda, you'll die in your own movie because when you're in trouble, nobody cares. They don't feel part of you. They have no sentimental attachment. They don't feel like they owe you some loyalties. But wait a minute. The moment you go out of your way to become relational, to connect with people, to know them beyond just what they do at work or who they are at the community, to understand their fears, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, to understand their past, their present and their future, to understand what really keeps them awake at night, to understand what makes their heart skip a bit, to understand what moves their body, and then to connect them at their point of need, to build a relationship, 
to be mindful and caring about the things that matter to them. As they say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's why great leaders don't start with great philosophies and intelligence and ideologies. They simply start with relationships. I read from Forbes magazine, it said, relationships rule the world. Let me tell you, this world is ruled by relationships. People create great opportunity, not because they are so competent. I know people with so much competence, intelligence and qualifications. They are hustling. They are living the lives of the damned, the life of the, <laughs> the, the, the outcasts. But they also know people with less talent, less intelligence, and less competencies by living lives of royalty. You know why? The difference maker here is relationships. So you, you must be very mindful about the kind of relationships you cultivate. The quality of relationships in your life is the quality of your life. The growth of relationships in your life is the growth of your life. So the second level of influence, I'll call it the first level because the first level is the position level. You are influencing people because you have a position. People are listening to you because they owe you something as their leader. People are following you because you got the right to fire and to hire. But the moment you stop having that authority, that power, trust me, nobody cares about you. Nobody even wants to know about you. You don't get any call. You have an issue or an incident. Nobody shows up because they had nothing more than the position you held. The second level of influence is relationship. Relationships rule the world. That's why people will go far. As they say, you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go farther, go with others. I've not seen anyone that have gone farther in life, either in music or in art or academia or in science or in sport or in, in, in business or in, in politics. I've never seen anyone that has grown beyond their peers or beyond their abilities and acumen without having cultivated strong, sustainable and substantial relationships. Step number two. The second level of influence is the permission level, the relationships level. Who do you know? Who knows you? Who do you have a personal and sentimental and just personal connection with? That the person you will influence. That the person that will go out there to influence others on your behalf. That the person that will broadcast, advocate, and defend your privileges and benefits and advance your interest. I say, life is more than education, is more than talent, is more than brain. Life is about relationships, and relationships rule the world. We'll be right back to continue with level number two, number three, level number four, and level number five of becoming a person of influence. With good influence, you can get the jobs you want, the contracts you need, you can get to the places that you want to access and you can associate with the right people that, that, that can take you to the next and next and next level.